The CARAMBA trial is an excellent research initiative by academia, different sites spread across, uh, I believe, four European countries, if not more. And I think that's remarkable these days to have academic initiatives to develop new drugs for patients with myeloma. Importantly, in the CARAMBA trial, we are testing CAR T cells against a different target, and I think that is always valuable in myeloma, SLAM F7, particularly as we are seeing, even at uh, the ASH meeting, how amongst uh, the mechanisms of escape are loss of target expression, such as BCMA and even GPRC5D. So having a CAR-T asset against a new target or an alternative target, such as SLAM F7, I think it is extremely valuable. On top of that, it is also true that in some countries, and Spain would be amongst those countries, access to approved CAR T cell products is still a challenge. And therefore, the possibility of treating patients for whom CAR Ts are probably the last hope for another remission, the possibility of treating these patients with an academic CAR T asset just such as the one being developed in Caramba is extremely, extremely important. We believe that immune monitoring in this era of immunotherapy for myeloma is important at least in threefold. First, to sequence and select the best regimens for the best patients, in other words, immune profiling to understand the fitness of the immune system and to predict what will be the most effective drug for this patient. Then immune monitoring to understand how these drugs work and even to select the best cell of origin to develop, for example, CAR T cells, knowing that CAR T cells can potentially be improved by the way they are being manufactured. And third, immune monitoring to assess treatment efficacy and to predict outcomes according to the modulation of the immune system that these drugs induce beyond cytoreduction. It's still too soon to address that question, but I can share that we are actu actively monitoring patients' immune status before, throughout, and uh, at the time of uh, relapse. And I think that this will be extremely useful to understand the term and to define the determinants of response and resistance to CAR T cells in general, and in this case being uh, I don't know if the first in class, but definitely one of the first assets, CAR T, targeting uh, uh, SLAM F7. Well, T cell exhaustion is uh, something that is natural in life. It's a reflect of aging, progressive inflammation, and it happens in every one of us. It so happened that myeloma is a disease of the elderly median age around 70 years and therefore itself the patient immune status is already aged and somehow exhausted. On top of that, we should always keep in mind that myeloma systematically overts from a previous stage known as MGUS that may last for 5, 10, 20 years, meaning that the immune system has been in close contact with tumor cells long before treatment is initiated. So already up front, in frontline uh, uh, treatment, the immune system is already exhausted to some extent. However, I do think that nowadays, with current frontline therapy that, in that induces very deep remissions, and in some of those studies and patients, these deep remissions are leading to stopping treatment and treatment-free intervals, and to some extent, this could restore patients' immune status into some level of normality when compared to an aged match population, 
particularly in those that are transplanted in each other. Well, the target of the CAR-T product in Caramba, SLAM F7, is present, if I remember correctly, in T cells, also potentially NK cells, and some antigen-presenting cells, obviously beyond the myeloma plasma cell, as well as the normal plasma cell. So this means that if you start from a pool of T cells to develop your CAR T product that will kill any cell expressing SLAM F7, this would mean that it could potentially kill as well some of the CAR Ts. To the best of my knowledge, we don't have data yet to determine if this is actually happening and what is the proportion. <music>